Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use macros in SAS. With macros, you can make your code more reusable and flexible. Reusing code can save you a lot of time and reduce clutter. Macro programming can seem daunting at first, especially if you're new to programming. But if you focus on and practice the basics and build out from there, I promise you'll find this skill very rewarding. This is the third video in the SAS macro series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the if-then-do logic and loops that will allow you to process large volumes of data with very little code. In previous videos, I showed you how to create and use a macro variable and how to use blocks of code to do repetitive tasks. In a previous video, we used the proc print you see on the screen to print Toyotas from sashelp.cars dataset. In this particular block, we're only printing information for Toyota models. When we run this code, as expected, we see a listing of only Toyota models. Let's write some code that prints information for Toyota on Thursdays and Ford for every other day. To start, let's wrap our code in a macro. Let's declare this a macro by typing percent macro, and let's name our macro cars. We're not using any parameters in this example, so we don't need parens. Before we add our if then do logic, let's end our macro using the men statement. So we want to run this code outputting Toyota when today is Thursday. There's a data step function called today that returns the date for today. There's another data step function called weekday that returns the numeric day of the week for any date. For example, a date of Thursday would return a value of five because Thursday is the fifth day of the week. If we combine these functions, we should be able to find out what day it is today. So let's write this like we would in a data step. So let's put it above our proc print. If weekday, because we're using the weekday function and we're using it on the date today. And the today function has open and close parens, just like that. So if weekday of today equals five, meaning Thursday, then do. And let's add an end at the end here to end our loop. And let's indent this because we're adding it inside a do loop. However, we're not in a data step. We're in a macro. In order to execute if then do in macros, we need to add a percent sign in front of each keyword. First, if then do and then end. Also, we can't use data step functions like weekday and today unless we're in a data step. Luckily, there's a macro function we can use named sysfunc that will allow us to use these data step functions. To use them, we need to wrap them in the sysfunc function. First, let's wrap today. And sysfunc begins with a percent. And then we wrap our today function just like that. Now, let's wrap our weekday function with a sysfunc. And this wraps all the rest of this piece right here, just like that. Looks like I'm missing a couple of closed parens there. So let's run this code. Then we need to make sure we call our function. So let's run sent sign cars. And then we can just run this by itself here. And we can see that because today is Thursday, Toyotas were printed to the results tab. But let's change this to Friday instead by changing this to six and see what we get. We see in the log that the proc print didn't run because it's not Friday. So let's extend our code so that we output Toyotas on Fridays and Ford on days that are not Friday. So let's add an else do again we need to add a percent sign before each because we're in macro coding now. And we need an end again. And let's copy this proc print and paste it down here. 
and change Toyota to Ford. So let's run this code. Now when we run this code, we output Ford models because today is not Friday. I frequently use this kind of macro logic to automate my SAS code. For example, I have a SAS program that runs other SAS programs using the macro include statement. Some of the programs I run every day. Others I run on a specific day of the week, like in our example. One thing I do very frequently is import and manipulate a series of files from a specific folder location. For example, in a previous video, we imported COVID hospitalization data by California County. We see here a series of COVID hospitalization files from COVID-1 through COVID-10. Each one shows the counts as of a specific day. For this file, the date is March 29th, 2020. You can see the counties over here and the hospitalization counts by different categories over here. The date for COVID-2, file name COVID-2, is March 30th. COVID-3 is March 31st. COVID-4 is April 1st, and so on until we get to COVID-10. Let's import each file one by one and keep only the Santa Clara hospitalizations. This would allow us, for example, to look at the Santa Clara COVID hospitalization trend over time. To start, using a let statement, we're creating a macro variable named fulls, FLS, that holds the name of the files we want to import. Each file is separated with a pipe. Again, this is COVID-1 through COVID-10. Next, we create a macro variable named obs that holds the number of files we're going to import. So there's 10 of these files. This number will be used in our macro do loop in a couple of lines down from this one right here. We use the include statement to run our SAS code that creates a macro we'll use to import this COVID file. We created this code in the previous macro video in the playlist. Next, we create our macro. I named it import SC, SC for Santa Clara. There are no parameters, so we don't need the parens. In order to loop through each of these file names, we need to create a do loop that starts at one, then continues through the number of files we're going to import. In this case, it's 10. We assign the value up here. We then use the scan function to assign each file name one by one from our FLS macro variable. The scan function has three arguments. First is the name of the macro variable that contains our files. In this case, it's FLS. Second is the iteration from our do loop. The first time through, i is 1. Third is the delimiter that separates each file name. And we can see up here that each file name is separated with a pipe. So a pipe is indicated here. In the first iteration, the SAS code will grab the file before the first pipe and assign it to the macro variable file name. The second iteration will grab the file between the first and second pipe, so COVID-2, and assign this value to macro variable file name. And then the third iteration COVID-3, and the fourth iteration COVID-4, and so on, until it has gone through all 10 files. We then invoke our macro that we created in our include statement to import our file and save it to the temp data set. You can see that this file name macro variable right here is used right here. So in the first iteration, this file name macro variable is replaced with COVID-1. So file name COVID-1 is imported and saved in a new SAS dataset named temp. Next, we create a new dataset named temp2 using a data step setting the temp dataset we created right here. We use an if statement to keep only the observations or county equals Santa Clara. With each iteration, we combine our temp2 values in the all Santa Clara data set. Notice that we have two different set statements. When i equals 1, in other words, our first iteration, we need to set only temp2. With subsequent iterations, we want to keep all observations we retrieve so far. These are stored in the all Santa Clara data set each time this data step is run. And we add all new observations from temp2 
that was retrieved from this data step. And proc data sets deletes temp and temp2 so they don't accidentally carry over to the next iteration. And then we end our do loop here and we signal the end of our macro using the men statement. And lastly, we invoke our macro so that it runs and performs these operations. So let's run this code. And we can see that our all Santa Clara data set includes only Santa Clara hospitalizations. See how the dates start at March 29th, then increment day by day through April 7th. And if we look at the hospitalized COVID confirmed patients, this column here, we can see that the numbers increase over time. Now, these are just a few observations. Typically, we would have a longer time span. But you can see how we could use this kind of information to create a graph and tell a story about COVID hospitalizations over this time. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something about how you might use this information to make your code more efficient and concise. Be on the lookout for other SAS macro videos where I show you how to create and use a macro variable and how to use blocks of code to do repetitive tasks. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.